Afghanistan lasted 13 years. For many soldiers, it isn't over yet. PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's not an illness. It doesn't keep me down. It's not a disorder. I deployed to Afghanistan in May 2010 as a medic. I was posted with the uh, Royal Canadian Dragoons at the time. I'd been there for a while. Uh, I was the uh, I Star uh, signaler. When I was outside the wire, patrolling with the guys, I was the senior most of medical authority. What I said went. So here I am, and it's like I was their mother, their sister, their wife, you name it. I took care of them, all of them, all the time. Lost a lot of, a lot of friends over there. I actually lost uh, my best friend. The Taliban was able to hit all three locations simultaneously. They just boom, boom, boom. And we knew they were coming, but the word didn't get out in time to our two, two coyote, uh, to that patrol. And they got hit pretty bad. Forty-four years old, going to Afghanistan, humping my shit through the desert, putting a few Canadians in body bags, dealing with Afghan children being set on fire by their dads. The whole time, I, I've got my headset on for the radio, and I'm listening to them. Uh, calling for help and screaming for help and you know everybody is yelling over the radio about what's going on and I took that pretty hard. You come home on a high, figuring you can defeat the whole world, and you, and you can't. I was pushing my friends away, hiding in the house. Then things started to decline after that. I was not sleeping, so when you take a big old bottle of rum and you drink to the point where you're numb, and you forget about everything, and it puts you to sleep. At the time, there was a big stigma about any mental health issue in the Army. It was just, well, if you're going to mental health, you're weak. And you know, I, I didn't want to be that guy that, I didn't want to be that weak. I was in denial for a long time. I could not accept it. Because I'm supposed to be strong. Because I, I had a lot of bouts of just uncontrolled rage and that would last 20 minutes, half an hour, and then it was just uncontrolled sobbing somewhere and it was like, you need to get some help. I did not want to lose my husband and I did not want to lose my friends. I never really suspected I had PTSD. I just thought that, you know, this was a normal reaction to, to coming back from Afghanistan. You know, I was uh, medicating myself by drinking. I had to 
struggled with that for, for a number of years. I was driving home from work and I wanted to play chicken with the semi truck. And that's when it hit me, being a medic, we were told to see the signs in patients. And that hit me, it's like, okay, why do I wanna do this? I pulled over onto the shoulder of the road, took the keys out of the ignition of my vehicle, put them into the passenger seat, got out of my vehicle, and sat on the side of the road and just cried. I think it was probably when I came home from work and my wife met me at the door and she had her suitcases all packed up and she said, I love you, I don't like you. And that was the last time I saw her. For soldiers who serve overseas, often the return home is the hardest part. Traditional therapies don't work for everyone with PTSD. For those still searching for peace, a new program is available. It's called the War Horse Project. They're all been giving these labels of PTSD. And all of a sudden, it's a conviction, it's, it's a label, they're not normal, they're damaged goods. We want to take that label, remove that label, redefine normal. What is their new normal? Dakota is, is my guy. He's that droopy-lipped black and white one. You know, he's, uh, he's pretty mellow. He reads how you're feeling that day. We have to show our real self in order to engage with a horse in a meaningful way. And horses just have that ability to call us on some of the issues we're facing. He's not asking for anything in return. He's just, you know, you tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. You just give me a little scratch behind the ear. It's great. If you're feeling all antsy and tense, he's antsy and tense. And if you go in there and you just you're nice and calm, and he's just the greatest horse. You're petting a horse, and the horse starts yawning just to find out that that's their way of relieving stress. And it's like we're giving something to the horses also, but then they're giving it just you, you zone out. Graham Ridley participated in the last War Horse Project. He was deeply affected and has returned as a peer support volunteer. Everybody's situation is unique and different, but there is a lot of the same, same symptoms, same feelings, you know. Roger's been more, he's been more open, more and more each week. You know, he's just sharing, and each time he shares, it's a little more positive. Shannon's done a lot of unloading, for lack of a better term. She's very interactive. She wants to get it out, you know, she wants to talk, she wants to be engaged. It keeps you grounded. When we're out there with our friends there, it, it calms you, it sorts you out. They're, they're there to make you feel better. We're finding that veterans that have a stress injury are perhaps a lot like a prey animal. Pairing them with a horse is a probably a very natural way to perhaps allow them to discover some of the things that they're experiencing and learn that through the horse, moving that in the presence of the horse. I had a horse named Topaz. She's usually a very calm horse. We're walking around and just getting the feeling of the sand. And it's deep sand, so it's bringing me back to Afghanistan. And Topaz is starting to feel my anxiety and she's becoming fidgety and I can see her feeding up my emotions, so I'm trying to bring myself down. Everything was going well until somebody was turkey hunting. My anxiety goes through the roof. So right away, we take the leads off, we go around the campfire, we talk it out. 
Allow your awareness to extend to all the sounds around you. Sounds that are close or sounds that are far away. In that moment, our goal is to support the member who uh, has experienced the, a trigger and to process and bring resolution to that trigger. Oh, you got burrs in you. She's been better. She's had good days and bad days out there. I know some are emotional for her because dealing with animals, they sense what you're feeling. So she comes home some days to tell me about what she did and how it affected her. So I think she's getting better. It's my wife. You don't give up on someone you love. Getting on a horse is a big deal. He doesn't fit as well as a The self-confidence piece is probably one of the, the biggest benefits to the riding portion. Riding the horse in the final session is one of the many goals of the program. The act of getting on the horse is paired with an emotional connection and a mutual trust between the horse and the rider. I know how to get him to turn with my feet. <laughs> but it's like I have to concentrate on my movements. Thanks, the boy. Thanks for the ride, buddy. You're awesome. You're a good guy. Awesome ride. Awesome ride. Yeah. yeah.